Look, Maul, I'm a spaceman. Yay. All right, easy does it. Easy does it. Perfect. Hey, what's up guys? It's Eternal Pain here and I am back again with another video, but it's not Minecraft or Destiny this time. I found another game that strikes my fancy and might just be my new favorite. So without further ado, let's get into some Star Citizen goodness. Alright, so chances are, if you landed on this video, you're probably interested in playing Star Citizen. I've been playing the game for a couple of weeks now, and though I am by no means a veteran player, I've learned a few things that might help you survive in the verse. From exploring the asteroid belt around Yella, to just enjoying the sights of the winter wonderland that is Microtech, in this series I will take you on a trip through the verse, showing you possible gameplay loops, places of interest, and informing you of some dangers that you should avoid. But for right now, I'll just keep things simple and try to help you get yourself off the ground for the first time. So strap up citizens and don't forget your helmet because I learned the hard way you need oxygen to breathe in space. Okay, so you've went to the website, you have downloaded the game using my referral code on screen now. And now you finally logged into the game for the first time and you're staring at your feet trying to figure out what to do next. Don't feel bad because at this point when I first logged in, it took me 10 to 15 minutes of channeling my inner Uma Thurman just trying to figure out how to stand up. At this point will be the first time that we actually use our interact key, also known as the inner thought. All you do is hold F down on your keyboard and then you can look around a little bit and you'll notice some things get highlighted and you'll see over here to the side of your bed it says get up. It's literally that simple and I feel like a dumbass for taking as long as I did. Anyway, you just tap that and you'll stand up next to your bed. Or in my case, you'll crouch. All right, after you've thoroughly explored your wonderful little apartment that you've spawned at, hopefully in New Babbage, that's the place I recommend starting out because it's just the easiest one of the locations in the game to navigate. You're gonna use your inner thought key again, and you're going to click right here to open the door to your hab. It's that simple. And this is another reason I recommend New Babbage because it is one of the more beautiful spots in the game. All right, once you've had enough of enjoying the view over New Babbage, I recommend we make our way to the elevator. Again, hold your inner thought key to interact with the panel. And then you're gonna use your inner thought key again to interact with this panel. Use your mouse wheel to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list and choose Lobby. Alright, you have successfully managed to make it to the ground floor of the Nest Apartments on New Babbage. Pat yourself on the back because that's more than I was able to achieve in my first 10 minutes. <laughs> Alright, from here I know you guys are dying to get into a spaceship and fly around and just see what you can find. So. I'm going to take you guys on to the spaceport and we are going to call a ship and learn a little bit about how to fly. All right, so you're going to want to come through that doorway and find your way to the staircase, which is going to take you all the way down to the Metro Loop. I say New Babbage is the easiest place because as soon as you come out of the apartment, you have an option to go straight to the spaceport. That's uh, not the case on the other locations. Now it's time to stand here and wait on a train. Know where you hope this train will take you. But you can't know for sure. Alright, once the train arrives, you're just gonna wait on the doors to open, and there's another player there. Uh there we go. Hello guy. What's uh what's going on? Alright, so at this point I am going to skip ahead a little bit in the video to not spoil the views in New Babbage. So I'll be right back. Alright, so we have now Don't interrupt me, lady. We have now managed to reach the Metro Loop underneath the spaceport. 
And I'm gonna show you where to go because sometimes I even get confused. Anyway, we're just gonna walk around the corner here through these little turnstile looking things and you're gonna go to the elevators that are in this little room. Call the elevator as we did before. And when you get into this elevator, you're gonna wanna click on the NBIS terminal and that'll take you up to basically the greeting area for New Babbage. I'll do a quick look around there and then I'll show you where you can retrieve your ship. All right, so when you step out of the elevator, you're gonna to go to your your right over here or your left if you come out of that side. Go through this little hallway and you're gonna end up in customs and information. And from here, you're just gonna walk around this way. Apparently that was a big step for me to get over. Walk up the stairs here and then you can see the entire city of New Babbage when it's not stormy and weird outside, which is almost never in my experience on this planet. Anyway, if you want to take a look around, you can come over here to the gift shop. You can get you one of these little guys. I had one, but then my ship got blown up and he got destroyed. He was my friend. I will always remember you. Over here, this area, you can rent ships like the Prospector and things like that if you don't own it to go mining. Or you can go talk to this lady here. And she always has something interesting to say. She'll tell you things about the lore of the planet. She'll tell you a joke if you want, but she does have some interesting tidbits. And from here, I'm not going to go up the stairs because there's not a whole lot up that way other than the entrance to the surface of the planet, which is really cold outside and you have a starting jumpsuit on, I would not recommend walking outside on Microtech. <laughs> All right, to retrieve your ship, you're gonna walk over to one of these little panels, use your inner thought key, click on the panel. And as you can see, I have four options here, but I'm going to go with my Cutlass Black. The only one of these I actually purchased is the Cutlass Black. These two here are for a special event that's going on right now, and the Freelancer is a loaner ship that they gave me for some reason. I'm not entirely sure as to why. Anyway, we're gonna go with the Cutlass Black, which is a ship I highly recommend. If you have $115 when you're first starting out playing this game, it is well worth it because the Cutlass Black is a good, all around ship and it will help you easily follow along as I do not have one of the cheaper options. Not to say that they're not good ships, it's just the Cutlass Black is a nice bang for your buck. And I forgot what hangar my ship was at and it's not telling me. All right, I'll give you a little walk around to my ship. This is the Cutlass Black and I absolutely love this ship. It's a good all arounder, like I said before. It can double as a fighter or a cargo hauler and it is very well suited for just about any situation when you have the proper upgrades on it. Now to upgrade this ship, it's gonna cost you about 400,000 UEC in game, but it's well worth it. Anyway, I'm just gonna walk up to my back panel, open up the door and walk inside. All right, so when you first get into the pilot seat of whatever ship you have, it could be a little overwhelming because you're gonna have all these displays in front of you that have information on them. There's a couple of different ways that you can turn your ship on. First one being using your inner thought and looking for something that says flight ready. You tap on that, it's gonna turn all of your MFDs and all of your systems on so you can see what's going on in your ship. Now I won't go into explaining these thoroughly in this video, I'll save that for a future video. But for right now, all you need to know is your comms panel and where you need to call to get out. You're always going to look for something that says either spaceport or landing services. And when you call them, they'll open up the hangar doors so you can finally take off. Something I stress, you always want to make sure you're not using too much thrust when you try to take off for the first time. So if you'll notice, there's a little white bar almost right in the middle of the screen that's moving up and down. That's your throttle control. What I recommend doing the first time you take off is put that almost to the bottom make sure your cursor is centered with the dot in front of you and then tap your space bar just to lift off the ground all right make sure you've got it leveled up and then you're going to hit in to bring up your landing gear and in my case i have a vtol ship so i have to hit k 
in order to straighten my engines out to fly straight out. So now we're just going to hit the W key to go forward. And there we go. We have successfully managed to exit the hangar at New Babbage. Now, this is a point where I recommend flying around a little bit and getting to know the control of your ship, getting to know how sensitive it is to your mouse movement or your stick movement, which whichever you're using. I personally use a mouse and keyboard just because that's what I'm used to and I don't have the extra money right now to buy a set of sticks. I would love to experience this game with the full flight simulator setup, but I'm poor. That being said, you can either pause this video and go exploring New Babbage for a little bit, which I highly recommend you do, or you can go straight along with me and we'll just scroll up on our mouse wheel to throttle up some. I'm going to take it all the way to the top and I'm going to make sure I'm at about at least a 75 degree angle. We're going to get some altitude and I will see you when we exit the atmosphere. You'll know you've exited the atmosphere when the horizon line and the altimeter on the side disappears. Once you've exited the atmosphere, we're going to bring it to a complete stop. So your space brake is your X button. Don't hold it too long or you will overheat your engines, which I'm going to do just to show you an example. The warning popped up right as I come to a stop. So uh, I have a little better coolers on my ship than you'll have on a smaller ship. So different ships will vary different ships in this game act completely differently they fly differently they have different capabilities and you'll just have to learn as you go when it comes to every different ship okay i have showed you how to get out of your apartment on new babbage i've showed you how to get to the spaceport i've showed you how to take off for the very first time so i'm going to give you your first job in star citizen hold on tight guys because we're about to go full philip j fry mode and be a space delivery boy <laughs> oh, i'm so stupid anyway what you're going to want to do is you're going to hit f1 and that's going to bring up your moby glass you're going to go to your contracts manager here and then you're going to look for the option that says delivery. And the only reason I recommend delivery to start out is because one, it's a good way to get to know how to operate your ship with landing and takeoff. And it's, it's a pretty good way to earn some starting cash in the verse. I wouldn't recommend doing the investigation missions because they take forever and the pay is not that great. And if you wanted to be a bounty hunter or mercenary, well, you kind of need some weapons for that. And if you're just starting out, the only thing you have is an arc light pistol that doesn't really do much. So you're best off being a delivery boy for now. I'll go into future ways to make money in later videos. I will cover each and every one of these professions with their own video and explaining them to the best of my ability. But for right now, I'm just going to show you how to do one of these delivery missions. So what you're going to do in your Moby Glass here, like I said, you're going to go to the delivery tab and then you're going to click on one of these. Doesn't matter which one. And then you're just going to hit accept offer down in the bottom right corner. And then it'll take you over to your accepted tab and show you the jobs that you currently have as active. Sometimes they won't be tracked. I've had that happen a couple of times, but not many. So you can just go down here and either hit abandon if it's something you really don't want to do or you accidentally clicked the wrong thing, or you can hit track or untrack to cycle through different jobs you have. Okay, so with this job being accepted, we are now going to go over to our skyline and you're gonna scroll down on your mouse wheel. And then you'll see these little beacons 
that's going to be either your pickup or drop off location for your package. Now you can click on that and hit set route and it'll give you a marker so that when you hit F1 again to exit your Moby glass, you just look for that marker on your screen. And now we're going to spool up our quantum drive for the first time. So you're going to hit B to spool your quantum drive. You have to wait on things to charge up. You'll see at the top is almost completely spooled and it has to calibrate. Different quantum drives have different calibration rates. So what I'm using right now is the stock quantum drive that comes with my Cutlass Black, which is called the Odyssey. The one I prefer to have is the Crossfield. It uses more quantum fuel, but it travels at about twice the speed. But for local jumps, I'm perfectly fine using the Odyssey. It uses less fuel and it allows me to stay out a little longer. And that's really helpful when I'm doing bounty hunting missions that are all in the same system. I just land at a port, switch out my drive, go on about my business. But anyway, now that we're all spooled up, you're going to want to make sure your cursor stays on that marker there because if you go away, it's going to give you this little warning. And then when you go back, you're going to have to recalibrate all over again. You don't have to re-spool, but you do have to recalibrate. So now that it's calibrated, you're just going to hold B and boom. There we go. All right, when you're trying to get to a specific place on a planet, instead of just flying there, like this would take me probably 20 minutes to fly down there probably not 20 minutes but it would take a, a decent amount of time you can just spool up your quantum drive here and as soon as it's done calibrating it will jump you to a location that is very close to where you're trying to go this doesn't work for every marker sometimes you're gonna have stuff that you actually do have to fly to and you can't do it for any point on the planet you can only do it for specific points like the research outposts and the mining outposts and stuff like that. Not to say it's not fun exploring the rest of a planet, it's just easier to get to these places as a starting point. We're gonna hold B again to jump into quantum and it's gonna take us on around the planet and put us pretty close to where we need to be. So I will see you again planet side. All right, so now I'm hovering just above where we need to pick up our packages. I'm gonna go over a quick landing tutorial. Something to keep in mind, all planets and moons in this game have different atmospheres. Some of them have a very light atmosphere, so you can go careening straight towards the ground as fast as your ship can go, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because it does take a minute to stop and you may just do a face plant straight into the ground, like I have done several times learning to fly. Anyway, when you come in for a landing, you want to dial back your throttle a little bit. And I recommend putting your landing gear on well before you need it. You're just going to come in nice and easy over top of the landing pad. Now, little outposts like this, most of the time, you don't have to call a landing surface. It's just for the major locations and ports. But still, it's always nice to, to try to call somebody to land, just so you don't get a fine or get your vehicle impounded. Anyway, we're going to ease up a little bit here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my ship around. That way, my rear hatch is facing where I need to go. And we're going to just come to a nice, soft landing. Just like that. And I forgot to put my landing gear down. <laughs> Okay, like I said, nice soft landing, just like that. Keep in mind guys, I am still a noob at this game, so I'm still learning quite a bit on my own, but I'd like to try and help people with what I do know and what I have figured out on my own the hard way. Another thing I learned, before you get out of the cockpit of your ship, you should always turn your engines off no matter what planet or moon you're on because every now and then a gust of wind will swoop your ship right off the ground 
and then you're not going to be able to get back in it because it'll just be floating there and you can't jump up to it. In which case you'll have to hold backspace and go to the wonderful land of Respawnville <laughs> and completely redo everything you just did. Alright, so we're going to hit Y to get out of our seat. I'm gonna go this way through my crew quarters, out the back of my ship. Another important thing to remember is do not trust other players. All right, a lot of them are friendly. I'm not saying the entire community is horrible, but you do have those bad apples that like to steal ships and just do a bunch of bad things so you always want to close your ship up that way it's locked and no other players can get into it I do not recommend spending a whole lot of time on these moons because the atmosphere is going to be extremely hot or extremely cold and you're gonna have a little time limit like you see down there in the bottom left corner to go do what you need to do there are environmental suits to counteract that but it costs about 15,000 UEC just to get one of them These little airlocks, like you saw, I just had to cycle. And I'll have to do that again on the way out. I was getting ready to say, I thought those doors were automatic. Anyway, I have a package here in this room. I always recommend the delivery missions that have one pickup place and three different drop-off locations because it's just a pain in the ass going to pick things up from three different locations. I, I don't know, that might just be me, but yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go back over to my Cutlass Black. You know, until update 3.11, my cutlass never said uninitialized on it. I don't know what the deal is there, if it's bugged out or what. That's, uh, that's uh, an issue for a future video. I will eventually go over all the known bugs that I have personally encountered in this game. It's just I haven't caught all of them on video. Now, even though this game is buggy, it's still a really fun game and it's immersive when you go through the right gameplay loops. Anyway, now that we've got the package back on our ship, you can either hold F and hit the place option, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you a shortcut. You can hold both your left and right mouse button and place it just like that. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go back in here and get the other two packages and I'll see you guys back on the ship. All right, so we're back on the ship. We have, whoa, my ship is shaking there for a minute. <laughs> we have all the packages here and you'll see the packages have numbers on them that directly corresponds to the numbers that are gonna be on their delivery location. So let's, uh, let's go drop off our first package here and we'll see what other kind of place we're, we're dealing with. Oh, something I would like to note these beds, you can actually log out from these beds. So if I lie down in this bed and then I look over here, you'll have the option to log out. Now I'm gonna get back up because I don't wanna forfeit the money for delivering these packages, but that's a really important feature to have in a ship. Otherwise you have to go back to a spaceport in order to log out of the game. If you don't, then you're not gonna be able to be in the same spot as where you logged out. Now, sometimes it'll spawn you in the middle of the verse in a completely different area than where you logged out, but that that doesn't happen every time. It's happened to me a couple of times. I'd just like you to be aware of it. All right, so once you get back in, you're gonna hit I to turn your engines back on. And then you're gonna throttle up a little bit here and hit the space bar to take off. Make sure you hit in to pull your landing gear back up. And then we're just going to get up to about, get up to about 3,500 meters. And 
then we are going to go into our skyline and plot a course for our first delivery. It's another thing about these delivery missions, they will help you to learn how to plot courses and navigate different atmospheres in the game. about a thousand meters above where I wanted to go but we're gonna hit F2 to bring our skyline up directly and our first delivery it looks like our first delivery is actually on the same moon that we're on right now so we're gonna navigate there oh no wait I'm stupid I'm looking at my own cursor <laughs> So, as a general rule of thumb, I always deliver to the moons first. So, where it says drop off package, and then the number, that number right there, like I said before, is the same number that's on the package. So that will help you determine which one you need to drop off at that location. So I'm just gonna set a route here. As you can see, it's got all my jump points right there. And I'm gonna hit F2 again to close that out and I'll see you guys when we get to the drop-off location Okay, so we've arrived to the jump point just over Cleo here and we're flying into the drop-off location um, Just a side note Cleo is one of my favorite moons in The microtech system is I, I don't know something about the uh, the mountain ranges and just the beauty of the moon it's, uh, it's a really nice place to explore. I haven't tried mining here, but uh, I will one day. Maybe I'll bring you guys along for the adventure. Anyway, I'm just gonna increase my throttle a little bit here. And you can see we're not that far away. And like I said, when you start getting close, you, you want to dial back on your throttle a little bit because you want to be able to control your ship when you come in for a landing. Just gonna put our landing gear down. We're gonna try and touch down on this pad nice and easy. Now a lot of the time when you're trying to land, you may get a collision alert warning. Don't freak out, it just means you're probably going a little too fast for landing. All right. And another successful easy landing out of the cockpit go back here and see Let's see the package we need right here is seven eight three three nine six right, that's this package right here Now sometimes when you're dropping off packages, it will either have you put them on a shelf or it may have you put them in a little delivery console. Um, either one, I'll show you exactly what you need to do. All right, we are completely cycled now. We can go inside and you'll see the little kiosk here. You're gonna hit your inner thought key and you're gonna hit the drop off button. Sometimes you have to pick packages up from these consoles, which in that case, obviously you would hit pickup, but we're making a drop off and you're just gonna tap place and there we go. I like to stand around and wait just to make sure it actually processed it. I've never really had a problem with that, but you'll get that little green thumbs up there and that means you are good to go to your next destination. I'm going to go deliver these other two packages and then I will be right back. I'm walking on sunshine, whoa, and don't it feel good? Shut up and take my package. Set it down. Let's see what you got. I uh, didn't expect a reply there, bud. No need to be so bossy. Let's go. Don't have all day. You know what? To hell with you. You know what? The machine did your job for you. I'm reporting you to the manager, sir. All right. 
right, it looks like the last package of the day is right back in New Babbage where we started. So I'm gonna do a quick flyover of the city, let you enjoy the sights at night, and I will tell you right now, New Babbage is one hell of a place to explore at night, whether you're flying through it or you're inside the commons area around the promenade. It is just a sight to behold. Isn't that just beautiful? All right, it looks like this package is gonna be on a rooftop over here. We need to drop off this package, boys. Go, 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 go. And final package in its rightful place. It's a beautiful thing. Just waiting on that thumbs up. There we go. And once you deliver the final package, you'll see a little thing up top that says objective complete. And there's my payment. So I just got 8,000 AUEC for delivering those three packages. And all in all, that took me about 15 minutes to do all of that. I don't think 8,000 UEC in 15 minutes is that bad of a deal. There are more profitable ways to make money in the game, but when you're just starting out, delivering packages is definitely the safest route. It's not completely safe. You do have pirates in the game and sometimes other players will just kill you for no reason. But hey, what are you gonna do? All right, now that I'm safely back in my ship, I just want to talk about one final mechanic in the game and then I'll let you guys go on your way and explore the verse on your own. So you may have noticed in the last couple of clips, I have a little water droplet icon down in the bottom left corner of my screen. That means I am thirsty. I need something to drink. I will warn you that if you do not drink or eat, you will die when that hits zero. You'll start getting a little loopy when it gets really low and then you'll just die. So yeah, it's kind of like real life. Make sure you hydrate and make sure you stuff your face. So now that all that's said and done, let's go up to our local space station, which is Port Tressler, and grab a drink. Right, like I said, at most major ports and cities, you have to request landing or you can get a fine and possibly get your ship impounded for obstructing a landing pad for too long. So we're going to go here and we're at Port Tressler right now. So we're going to call Port Tressler and they're going to assign us a landing pad, which you're going to just look for. There we go. You're going to look for that little icon there. And then you're going to slowly make your way to that icon and land on the pad that it's over just to avoid getting fees and losing your ship. Space stations are also a, another good thing to fly around to get better acquainted with how to maneuver your ship. I've, uh, I've actually become a pretty decent pilot just from flying around different space stations and trying my luck with high risk maneuvers. I have blown myself up quite a few times, but uh, that's a tale for another day. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna get up to this pad, land my ship. That was a little rough, but we didn't explode. All right. Let's go inside and get a drink. Okay, something to note about space stations. When you're walking up to the entrance to go to the elevator, you'll see this little force field looking thing here. As soon as you get on the other side of that, you can actually take your helmet off. So I'm going to go in here to actions, item actions, and unequip my helmet. And I can breathe just fine. But as you saw from the beginning clip in this video, when I ran out of air, as soon as I walked outside of there, 
I started to suffocate. So that's just something to keep in mind, that as soon as you get in this little area, it's safe to take your helmet off, which you're gonna need to do in order to eat and drink. Let's go to the lobby. All right, now as soon as I come out in here, something I always like to do is go over to one of these little consoles and whatever ship I was flying, well, sometimes it'll just give you the option to claim, but uh, a lot of the times, it'll give you the option to store your ship. I highly recommend storing when you can. Don't claim because you'll have a timer to wait on your ship, but I highly recommend if it says store here, just go ahead and store your ship. It'll prevent people from pad ramming your ship and just blowing it all to hell. But for right now, I'm just gonna have to take a risk because I don't want to claim my ship. All right. You can come over to here to the hot dog stand that's in Port Tressler as soon as you get off the elevator over there. And you can grab you a chili dog. And as soon as you do, I don't know why I took it out of the dish tub, but that's kind of unsanitary. Eh, I'm gonna eat it anyway. While it's in your hand, hold the left click button on your mouse and you'll eat. As you can see, my hunger went back up to 100. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab a drink. Nothing like an ice cold pips to end your day. I'm just gonna chug it. Just gonna chug it. There we go. My hydration's at 100%. And you know what? I don't like the way this girl's staring at me. So I'm just gonna drop this can on the floor. You know what? You can pick it up. I don't like you. Well guys, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you have found this video helpful in getting you started out in the verse and I hope you enjoy the game. It's a very immersive experience. There are some things that can set back your progress a little bit, but overall, I keep playing the game because I enjoy it and it's just really fun to go around and explore. I hope you guys have a good time in the verse and if you wouldn't mind, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for future content. Until next time, I'll see you in the verse. Whew, that was a hard day's work. I know you hate to see me go, but you love to watch me leave.